Newton's Nuggets. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Newton and you're back for another Newton's Nugget show. Um, you're back listening to some dodgy magician with a bald head and a grey trilby and his mate Jesse. Say hello Jesse. Hello Jesse. We're back for another Newton's Nuggets. I don't know why you listen to this, I don't know why you watch us, but I am really grateful that you do. So thank you very much and enjoy the show. Jesse, how you doing mate? Yeah, good thanks Paul, how are you? I'm good, I'm tired and it's still a weird time at the moment, but it's all good. Um, so, yesterday we did some interviews with a few of my friends and we're gonna show these lovely people the first interview. Now the first interview E was Matthew Sterling. Uh, he's my buddy who's a stuntman, a magician, a hypnotist and an actor. He's also one of the nicest blokes you could meet in the entertainment industry. I'm a lucky boy, I've known him since I was about 13 years old and he's helped keep me from becoming a diva in the entertainment world. And, and Matt and I happily talk about that. There's a lot of divas in our industry and we happily say that we'll never be like that. It's just not in us. Um, Jesse, I warned you what Matt was like before you met him. Uh, <laughs> did, did he fit what I said? Yeah, uh, really nice bloke. Really, really nice and really interesting. Yeah. He's one of those people who... I, I like to enter interviews not knowing someone too much. Yeah. Because then you get a real feel for them and then you're asking off the cuff questions and things like that and and you're you know them a bit more already so you're asking all the the questions from a, a knowing basis so I'm, I'm trying to just think of off the cuff things yeah but then looking at him afterwards I mean he's what I would call proper famous <laughs> yeah, he, uh, yeah but then and I think we mentioned it in the interview he helped me move house you know what I mean he yeah. was jumping in and out of a truck moving a sofa so that me and my wife could move into our new house. Um, yeah. um, recently, a mutual friend of ours, uh, I'll, I'll show you this picture privately, but there's a picture of Matt and one of my other mates, both in wheelbarrows, because they were doing gardening at his house. <laughs> <coughs> That's what Matt's like. He's really not a diva. And then no. you look at his CV, and he's had a really good main part in Rogue One, Star Wars. He, he's done some of the stuff he's got on IMDb. He's really doing well. Yeah. We, uh, Jen well, and I looked up, uh, looked at a video of him in one of the Fast and Furious movies where he was acting alongside uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Yeah. Yeah. And it's annoying now. Now you know him, now you've met him, whenever you're watching a film, you'll go, was that? It was. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh, and BGT, Britain's Got Talent, he did so well on that. He did so well on that. Um, but yeah. these things, it, it's, I think he's an entertainer in the true sense of the word. He doesn't just stick to one thing, he's got a few strings to his bow, and he's very good at all of them. Okay, right, if it's alright with you guys, I'm going to now go to the interview of Matthew Sterling, one of my friends. And before we go to that... We're just going to take a few seconds out to say thank you to one of our sponsors, and here it is. Just want to say a quick thank you to Forest Edge Solicitors. They're based down in Ringwood, uh, but they cover all of the UK. Uh, they help with personal matters, they help with business matters. Uh, they're open around you, really, so if you need to get to see them outside of working hours, give them a call. They do also do a free initial consultation with absolutely no charges and they don't watch the clock when they're doing it. I know this for a fact because they've helped out some of my friends. They do small disputes all the way up to large court hearings. If you need legal advice, if you need legal help, please get an expert involved. And that's forestedgesolicitors.co.uk. Um, I'm just gonna, do we have their phone? Their phone number is 01425 208 418. Mention Paul Newton, you can even mention Newton's Nuggets. You can mention Jesse if you want, that would really freak them out. Just say that we said hello and we hope they're all right. They are lovely. Awesome, thank you for listening to that guys. Here we are with the one, the only, Mr. Matthew Sterling. Newton's Nuggets.
Hello everyone, welcome back to another Newton's Nuggets. Uh, it's Paul Newton here, just messing about, and for some reason people keep coming back to listen to some balding 40-ish year old man who wears a trilby. Um, with us today, we're going to start our interview session, and we've got a bloke that I love to bits. I, uh, he's, he's one of the nicest blokes in the entertainment industry. I've known him since I was a kid, so I have to say he's really nice because he knows too much about me. Um, today we've got Matt Sterling. Matt is one of my mates. He's a stuntman. He works in Hollywood. He's an actor. He's a magician. He's a hypnotist. And genuinely, he's an all-round lovely bloke. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> thank you, mate. Um, so, ladies and gents, this is Matthew Sterling. Matthew, thank you for coming on, mate. No problems. I had nothing else to do. I'm in self-isolation, so I thought, well, I might as well just, you know, talk to somebody. Mate, do you, you know what? Are you finding it as weird as I am? Because I now haven't had an audience for seven weeks. Um, yeah, I am finding that a little bit strange. I'm finding that, I mean, I, I had so many weddings books that have just, you know, gone down the pan at the moment, which is, uh, is by the by, but nothing you can do about that. Um, I do miss it. I do miss performing. Um, and yeah, I just miss being around people, really, because that's me um so yeah is it? and, and we've we've always been um um in the nicest way in the world we've always been huggy blokes when yeah. we see each other we give each other a hug yeah. man yeah. pat on the back and check you're okay yeah i, I haven't been able to do that to anyone no no i, I no. can't I feel I for the next time i go in tesco's i'm just gonna grab some i do find it i do find it odd it is a bit strange <coughs> a bit of a strange bit of a strange situation but I mean, we're doing the best thing, being everybody being at home and, and, you know, these people that are out there, you know, helping us and God knows, you know, fighting this, this ridiculous thing. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a bit of a strange environment, but you quickly adapt. I think you, I feel sorry for people that live in flats. My God, I feel sorry for people living in flats because I think a lot more people are um, appreciating their gardens at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I, I can't remember how many days. Is it 40 days now? 41 days or something stupid? 41, 42, something like that. Since the fish right. down, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, because I've cause I got little Emily, who's 11. And if yeah. I didn't have a garden, I don't know how she'd cope. No, no, this is it. So I do feel sorry for people that are in flats with two or three kids and they can only go out once a day and you've got kids that are very young and they're constantly, you know, pulling on you. I mean, I've got, you know, Oakley's, you know, he's, he's, he's a three-year-old, Pup, maybe he's still a puppy really and he's constantly on the go constantly so I've got the garden so I play with him I go for a, a walk in the morning we do about six kilometers in the morning um, then I come back uh, have a little bit of breakfast then I train for about 45 minutes and then I just do all my little bits and bobs around the house really I've been doing loads of DIY um, and, and building definitely. costumes uh, <laughs> yeah I have been building I have been is, that, is that something that's in the public domain or is that just on your private account? And no, do you know the funny thing it? is it's obviously got out because I had, I don't know if it was the Gazette or something today, um, contacted me about it, asking what <laughs> costume I've been wearing to go and cap the NHS. No so way. I had to the woman that the first one I wore was a blow inflatable dinosaur. Then I went out dressed as a man in a cage being carried by a monkey. Um, and now I'm going to be, now... I just done a teddy bear, which was the little teddy bear that holds you. It looks like it's giving you a piggyback. <laughs> um, and this week, this week I'm going to do my stormtrooper because obviously it's May the fourth today. You've May got to. You've <laughs> got to. We're, we're, so stormtrooper. We're coming recording out. this on May the fourth. So he's uh, going to do stormtrooper. <laughs> Eric's um, Eric's coming out this week, and then I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm running out of things. I might have to wear, wear a mankini for the last one, but that's going to be a bit of a shock for the. Please, the, no uh, photos, no photos, no, no video. Definitely not. Yeah, That's definitely not. just not needed, mate. I think <laughs> people have seen enough of you. And actually, you know what? That leads us on to something nicely that we spoke about earlier. That leads us nicely on to Britain's Got Talent, where you ended <laughs> your first on-stage appearance with not many clothes on. No, I, I, no, I originally, we weren't originally going to do that. We were originally going to do, so it was going to be, my original plan was... Yeah, um, we were going to stick with Man on Fire because it was quite hard to come up with films that it actually explains what the stunt is or what 
the description yeah. of it. Yeah, because it needed to be something that was so good. Yeah, you know, that, you did um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, what, what <coughs> do you do? You do Jaws, what do you do? So, and Man then we talk about was, Up at one point because. Yeah, so it was going to be it was going to be Man on Fire, which we stuck with. Yeah. Then it was going to be Skyfall, which was absolutely perfect. Then it was no, it wasn't be that. That was just beautiful, mate. <laughs> when, when that went off, and um, and when when Tony went off the side, did I hear a rumor that security thought he was real trouble? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> so after we after we did it, I had to go. I had to go back to the Palladium the next day because they wanted to do some more interviews with me. And as I walked into the Palladium, because it was they were still doing the auditions, one of the security guys grabbed me and said, "I want to work with you." And I said, "What? What?" He said, "You scared the hell out of us." And I said, "Why?" He said, uh, well, we knew you were doing the man on fire, but we didn't know about the, the, the skyfall. Um, and also, as, as soon as Tony started heckling me, security went on the radio and went, we got a bloke heckling, we got a bloke heckling, where is he? He's in the box, he's in the box. So they started legging it to the box, stage right, and then on the radio, they suddenly heard, he's fallen out of the box. And they were like, oh my <laughs> God, no, what's happened? And then they went, it's all right, it's part of the act. So they went, oh, for sake, they, they forgot about it. None of them kind of told them about so it. So if they um, had, if that, if some of their guards had been closer to where Tony was. Oh, that had grabbed him. I think Tony would have gone, I get a jump though, Tony, he's, he's good. The, the <laughs> woman that was in the box kind of grabbed his leg as he went. And, and on the, if you look, look at BGT, he kind of kicks his leg a little bit before he goes. Um, so those are, the, those are the two the original are going to do. We weren't going to do yep. the Matrix because I didn't really think about the Matrix. And it was going to be 12 Angry Men, which is a courtroom drama, but not yep. many people know about it. So no. I was going to have 12, 12 guys come on, have a bit of an argument, and then I was going to go, Alicia, whoever it was, what did you think, 12 Angry Men? Then I was going to go in between the group, and as I went in the group, I kind of split them up and said, Simon, what did you think of, or what did you pick? And he says, up. And as he says up, I was going to be on a wire and I was going to go into the gods. But we didn't have time to rig the wire and do all that sort of stuff. And it was hard enough job to do the box rig and allow for Tony to do his fall out of the, uh, out of the royal box. Yeah, because even setting a place up for him to land without the yeah. is knowing that was <clears throat> going on. We had to take two rows of seats out. We had to take... Um, Two rows of seats out, and it was what I think they charged twenty-five pound per seat to take out. Um, but BGT were behind us all the way. They really wanted us to do it. They really wanted it because they just thought it was just going to be a, a spectacle, and it was. Mate, the thing about BGT is they need some. They need things that are different. They yeah. need the wow factor. And yeah, absolutely. seriously, you brought exactly that. No, it was good. It was. I loved it. it was. Loved um, it. Yeah, it was good. It was it was different, and we we enjoyed doing it. The guys that helped me did a fantastic job. No one moaned. Um, they all they all sort of mucked in. All the stunted boys mucked in. Yeah. Um, it was no. It was great. Again, there was no egos in that room. No, no, no. no, was, no. That's why was... I picked all of those. That's why I picked the people that I know and my friends and that sort of stuff because I knew there would be no egos, and I knew there would be. You know, we all mucked even on the second audition that was that was really, really kickball at scramble. I mean, it was just unbelievable, you know, because you had a certain amount of time to rehearse on stage, you get your slots, uh, and then when you go live, you are going live. There's an eight-second or six-second delay. You've got three minutes to change the set around, and then yeah. you're on. Bang, and that's it, you're on. And it was, it was unbelievable pressure. For, for, those who, yeah. for people who might not have seen the second one, um, the ending when you flew backwards and went through a wall, live on stage, live yeah. across the nation. How the hell did you set all of that up in three minutes? <laughs> it was hard. The hardest thing that was that one of the hardest things was obviously putting the wall in, putting the line in for the for the jerk back. We were the first of the people to allow to be screwing stuff into the wall, the back wall of the theatre of Labatt's Apollo or the Apollo Hammersmith. Oh, God, well. yeah. Um, so we had to screw big, massive, great big bolts and a, and a rostrum at the back of the stage because obviously it's got to pull me off my feet and I'm 17 stone. Um, and there was and it's got to do it with such an impact. Yeah, it's got to do it with such an impact that you don't want to pull the wall down. But the only thing was, because there was no, there's no, there's no iron, there's no curtains or anything in between, 
we had to get one of the guys up into the grid because obviously he's going to fall down on a wire because he's uh, uh, they guess they, they pick a window cleaner and my mate Pete was going to be on a wire and stop. Well, what they had to do was put a curtain in front of him, a little curtain. He had to hide behind the curtain and we had to lift the curtain up at the same time as him. So he hid behind from the audience and he went up into the gods. So Genius. yeah, it was, it, Genius. And, and it, all of that yeah. happening within the three minute gap. Yeah, so we had to put an air around into the wall. What your boys were like? Mm. They were good, mate. They were absolutely brilliant. They were epic. All of them were absolutely superb. Seriously, I know know what, two-thirds of those, that crew that you had-ish? Yeah. And uh, just the conversations that have been had when you're not there as well, they so had your back. It was lovely. Oh, no, they were absolutely lovely. Brilliant. We all just mucked. When we did the rehearsal, it all went what? It all went completely wrong. Nothing worked. And the producers were coming in saying, is it going to work on the day? I went, I don't know. They said, well, we need to find out because, you know, we have got 12 million people watching. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, it better work. But yeah. a bad rehearsal is a good show. So I was along the lines of sort of theatre. And I played at the theatre. I, I didn't even think about the cameras. The only, the main camera that I thought about, and funny enough, the director um, of BGT, the, the camera director, she uh, used to go to Italia Conti. So me and nice. her stuck it off right away and we were talking. And I said, look, you can, you can put the camera there. And she said, I'll go with everything you say. She said, you know where the best angles are. And I went, okay, fine. I said, Because you had to play people. it for the live audience. And I said, I'm just playing it for the live audience. I said, whatever you do with your cameras, the most important one is on the last shot is the camera that's directly in front of me. Because if it was at an angle you would see the wire going through the wall and connected to me. I said, that, yeah. that's my only priority. Yeah. She said, no problem. And as, as a magician, we all know those moments when you can be Copperfield flying across the stage and something yeah. lights up a wire. Yeah, yeah. In the- so, yeah, I, as, long as, the, as long as the judges didn't see it, and I was happy, and, and funny enough, they didn't see it. They had, because they, the way they lit it as well, um it was good it was really the the only one thing was bad for us they kind of they 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 cut the lights out because tony's supposed to get electrocuted and they popped the lights as soon as tony connected the two wires and it went bang so it was like that because we wanted Uh, to go bang and go into the wings but that is what it is it was just one of those things really yeah Yeah. unfortunately because um a lot of people don't know you worked as a theater technician as well yes and so fortunately we both did that and you can understand why that possibly happened. All you need yeah. is a person take yeah. a cue yeah. slightly wrong, and it's done. Yeah, it throws it out a little bit. But it's good. It was good. We got as far as we wanted to. Um, and it was, now, yeah. now, important, important stuff. Um, big question for you, okay? Yeah. And this is one that all of my followers will probably be really interested. What, what, what did you enjoy more? Being one of the finalists of Britain's Got Talent, or dancing next to me in some dodgy show about 15 years ago? It's a hard question, mate. Um, let me just have a think about that for a second. BG2. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> but, um, yeah. so, uh, I, I wanted to talk about you not being a diva. I know where you came from. Grew up, grew up in West London. Uh, same yeah. I did. Um, and you got a scholarship to Italia Conti, and you mentioned Conti's earlier. Yes. Did that have much of an effect on the way you went? Yeah, it, it's, um, yes, it did. I mean, I came out of Conti's after, the, after a one-year drama course, first of a year drama course, scholarship, and I kind of went, yeah, I'm not prepared for big, the big world out there. So I said, I'm going to go back. So I went back for a further two years, and I did performing arts. So I did everything. I did tap, jazz, ballet. I did a lot. I did, you know, I did singing. I did a lot. I did everything. And I wasn't a natural, I wasn't a dancer because a lot of the kids that went to Conti's in, in my sort of era and, and went to performing arts had already been dancing for, you know, 10 years of their life. And I hadn't. So it was very good. I met some very influential people there and I learned a hell of a lot. And then I started doing pantos for Bonnie Lithgow, who was Nigel Lithgow's wife who used to produce LWT, um, yeah. and, uh, and I, 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 I kind of crafted the art of being on stage and not, you know, not that I, 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 was, a, um, I, I was a novice when it came to stage, because I already performed at, you know, at the Beck, with the Beck Youth Theatres and stuff like that, and I'd already started doing a couple of adverts, 
Um, so in that sense, then I started doing pantos, then I went on tour after that. But it, it did, it gave me a base of what it's kind of all about. And and out of Conti's really, I got an agent. Um, yeah. And then I started. I started the, the, the world of, you know, running around and spending my whole life on tour and living out of the back of a car. And it's weird, um, isn't it? Because you, you, you go into that college education where, where they all want you to be the best and show off your best. And then you leave that and start working where it's a case of, we're not going to mollycoddle you. You have to prove it now. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, it's a hard business and it, it, is, it still remains a hard business. But the problem is now it's even harder in the fact that you've got people out there that are famous for doing nothing, for doing absolutely, for sitting at home on a sofa watching the TV. Hey, hold on, hold on. Now, that's, that's what I'm doing. Shut up. They're now, they're now celebrities. They're now, yeah. You know, you know, you go on to help a celebrity get me out of here, and I sit there and I go, "Who are they? Help I'm a celebrity get me out of here. Who are they?" Yeah, and, and you don't recognise nine out of well, ten of them. Yeah, and and it's and it it's affected so many people from our age and younger and further on. I mean, I think of of, of my ex girlfriend Shelley. She runs now a theatre school, and. Yeah mums and, and parents come into her and say right how do you make my kid famous that, that's that's the bottom line that's all they want and yeah she just goes or put them on love island or something like that then because what's the point so that's that's your kind of that's what you're competing with now yeah if you think everybody can do it and once the doors were open once this equity thing you know because it, it was years ago as you know you can't have equity until you act you can't you can't act until you have equity so it was a closed shop yeah. And then Margaret Thatcher said, no, you can't have closed shops. And then, as opposed to 200 people going for the same advert, you've now got 1,500 people going for the same advert. Yeah. And I remember going for a, an advert audition with a guy who could not act for Toffee, and he was a taxi driver. And I went, this is it. This is the beginning of the end. So No skill, no do? knowledge, nothing. No. But no, he's got no, an equity no. card. No. Yeah. So, that's kind of ruined it a little bit. Um, so in that sense, the whole thing's kind of changed, you know, because you've got the big brothers, the goggle box, the help on the celebrity get me out of here. The only way is Essex. The only way is Watford. The only way is Cheltenham. The only way is wherever it is. Yeah. That's, that's kind of your problem with the entertainment business now. Um, and those people are then given the opportunity to go and do, play a lead role in Panto or go and be in the West End in me and or go and be in, you know, nine to five in the West End. And you go, well, what, what experience have you got? Well, I was on Gogglebox. Oh, great, awesome. But you're going to yeah. get audiences going to go and see them because they've supported Gogglebox or they've supported, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, you know. it's, it's that fame thing, mate. It's that fame culture. Oh, we recognise them. We'll go pay 25 quid a ticket to go and see them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've uh, got, actually, I think you've got a load of hard grafters now doing things like the cruise ships. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, so, I think cruise ships now are our best variety acts. Hmm. So uh, I just kind of, when I came out of Contes, I went, no, I wasn't prepared for it. I went in and started doing tours, did the tours, and then kind of, excuse the pun, fell into the stunts because I met a guy, I was at the Opera House in Covent Garden, met him, he became one of my best mates, Richard Bradshaw. I remember Richard said to me, he had just qualified, and he said, you need to try and be a stunt man. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I think it might be another string to the bow. So kind of, it took me four years, and then I did all my training, and then that was it. Really, I was I was off. But that's, I can remember you going through the training, and you were working your backside off at the time as technical crew, just yeah. to keep the money coming in to yeah. pay for the training to get yeah. where you wanted to be. Um, yeah. Okay, horrible question for you. Which one gives you the most joy? Because you've got acting you've got the stunts i know that you mix the two as well because you get some better roles because you can act and do stunts at the same time you've got the hypnosis you've got the magic which one makes matthew sterling smile the most uh, it's a it's a hard question a lot of people ask me uh, i love it i love it all i still i still get a buzz from performing stunts um, but I love the creativity 
of magic. I still love being on stage. I still love, I still love theatre. I adore theatre. If I could go to the theatre once a week, I would do. Um, yeah. And I still, I still, and I like performing close up. I love having an audience of people that are, that are there, that you've got them. And at any point you can just go, right, well, that's it. And just leave and walk away from them and, and watch them all going, have it, you know, and they've got a fork yeah. that's twisted or, you know, you've, you've put a bottle through the table or you've, you've done whatever. Um, I like the creative side for magic. I love the communication. I love it. I love it all. And I, and, and I don't think all of the elements, if you think about it, the magic and the stunts are exactly the same. We're creating an illusion. So you're kind yeah. of creating the illusion that, you know, you've just fallen out of a building or you just had a fight or you blah, blah, blah. You've, you know, you've been hit by a car. Um, and, and, and as performers, you crave that, you crave that, applause and you crave that that want to be you know wanting to do it again and again and again with stunts you don't kind of get it because you do a good job people go yeah well done nice one okay moving on next shot yeah with magic you you do and and i think on stage i do love if i did a tour it would be absolutely you know brilliant i'd love to do a tour sorry sorry if yeah is there a possible no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so because because I don't want to give up all. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. There's a lot of great performers out there. There's a lot of fantastic performers out there. There's a lot of good performers out there who can't perform. There's some amazing performers. You know, uh, um, yeah. sleight of hand wise. I mean, incredible. You look on YouTube and Facebook and God knows what, and I go. How the hell did you just do that? How the hell? Yeah. But they've got about as much charisma as my bum. And I go, you've got nothing there. And yet I know performers that have got the same seven or eight tricks and they'll go around and they're great. They're fantastic. Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I love it all, mate. I, I don't and, think and I you're don't right. Think I, I, um, stage I match is so different to close up. Close yeah, up is so intimate. So, so I love doing the cruises. But then when I do the cruises, you've got to win the audience over because they're not your audience. They yeah. haven't come to see you. They're on a cruise and you've been put on that cruise. Yes, so they're on a the cruise first, and you then, happen to be the performer. Yeah. Within the first 20 seconds, bang, you've got to win them. Once yeah. you've won them, you've got to keep them. And you've got yeah. to keep them for 45 minutes. So cruises, there's a lot of pressure on you. It's like, oh my God, you know, it's like being, in a, it's like being a, on a on a comedy club it's it, you've got to win them and they're a lot older there's a real you know a difference of of, of, of range um yeah and statistically our audience when we did bg bgt that voted for us was kind of from about 12 years old the majority was about from about 12 years old till about 50 the older generation was kind of voting for uh, the singers and the comedians, but we had a high proportion of those sort of people because they loved the act and they knew it was different and it was entertainment, which they don't often see nowadays. Yeah. So you kind of, it's, it's hard, it's different, but I, I don't think I could choose. I couldn't, I couldn't choose between it all. I love it all. And I love, I love the people that I work with and I just have a laugh. So rather than listing the things that you do, would you be happier if I said Matthew Sterling, He's an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, to me, is you. Yeah. You know, I, whenever, I, whenever I introduce you to someone as a magician or as a stuntman, I always think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say what he's like. Do you know? No, no. Um, it's, uh, it's, but uh, entertainer. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely, I'm, I'm, you know, my, I've always, my love has always been around entertainment and I, I love the fact of getting paid for something I enjoy doing. What, what more could you ask for in life? Yeah. I know people that get paid very, very well for working in a bank or, you know, whatever they do, financial guys or God knows what, but they just do it for the money. And, I, and, and there's the no love. Day, no, I walk into a gig, have a laugh with people, get out of it, and they go, yeah, here's your money at the end of the day. And I go, what, I got paid for that as well? Wow. You know, and after doing a stunt week and I'm working with some nice people and, you know, doing stuff that I enjoy doing, have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a banter with the people and the actors and the crew. And I know yeah. a lot of crew now. 
Um, and and I come out of it and they go, right, here's your wage packet. You go. Can, can, I, can I just clarify for everyone that watches this? Please still pay us both. Okay, we <laughs> that bit too. Yeah. But you're right. I yeah. woke out of a gig and I just think that wasn't work. No, no, exactly. I mean, you know, as, 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 as my dad once said to me, it beats digging holes. So I was like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Very true. And actually, actually, we both dug a big hole in your garden once. Yeah, quite a big hole. Yeah. Still you hate there, me, don't you? It's you building hate there. Me. Um, <laughs> mate, Who did you seriously. Put it in that? <laughs> we, we we put some one of my ex girlfriends in it and then put a big big office on top of it so Matt could pretend it <laughs> yeah. would work. Um, but but no, mate. And I know that you're a busy boy. I know there's other people you want to see and you've got a chat to tonight. But seriously, I have got a chat about Star Wars tonight because it's May the fourth. So. May the fourth. How did how did uh, dude? You've got your own Star Wars card. I have. I have my own Star Wars. I have my own top trump. I feel this is the only time I can go a little bit, little bit fanboy on you. Okay? <laughs> because let's be honest, if I do that without Jesse here, you would just slap me and tell me where to go. <laughs> but yeah, I got my own. I got my own when you got that part in Rogue One, and and for me that was the perfect blend of stunty and actor. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's like nice. that's it. Yeah, it's nice to get. I've just been watching Gangs, Gangs of London. Have you been seeing it on Sky TV? Haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's very violent. There's a lot of stunties in it, um, but it's it's nice to kind of now start to see stunt people getting more and more acting roles because you know I I, I can't even remember the job that I was on, and I did a little part, and the director went, "That was very good." Oh, stunt people can act, and I thought, "You get we can <laughs> act." Yeah, that's what we are you know that's our basis that's our background well most yeah. of us but not nowadays but but yeah it's nice to get you know when we did bulletproof um uh Mate, director, that was awesome the director was great and he just went it's fantastic he said i can just give you i can give you a, you know a, 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 some in, inspiration of this and that he said but you just take over and i go well that's what i'm about and he went no it's brilliant he said i'm I'm using stunt guys every time now. So I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was lovely. But, but this is it. I reckon UK-wise, there are, and I know a lot of these are your mates, probably 10, 11 stunties that I know who are really good actors as well. Yeah. And, and, and you are one of the top of them. And whenever right. I see you actually getting a part, I always think to myself, nice one. That's where you should be. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. I love, the, I love the acting side of it. I like that, you know. But it just saves money for the production wise because they go right. We need a thug, yeah. we need a killer, assassin, or whatever he is, blah blah blah. Because I don't get romantic leads, not with this face. And um, it's the um, beard, dude. And Trust me. I'm... Exactly, as my mum says, you've got a face for radio. Um, and I just yes, um... we're doing this as just a podcast, not on YouTube. <laughs> Safer. Just... Um, no and productions, productions know they can they can go right as opposed to getting an actor to play the part. And then going right, we need to we need to double him now. We need to find a double. Right, that's another X amount of money. They can go right. We can use him, and we can film him doing the stunt, and we can get him close to show it's him actually dying or getting hit yeah. by the car. Blah 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 blah. So, and that's yeah. still something people look for when when the action oh, yeah. happens. People still slow it down, zoom in, try to the actors changed. And yeah, we're course you. Yeah, like you said, it just makes sense. They save on budget, and it's more believable. Yeah. Just, yeah, just, yeah. The stunty that can act for crying out loud. Um, <laughs> that um, oh god, that name's gone from it. So bulletproof. I loved bulletproof. I thought that series one of bulletproof was awesome. Really enjoyed it. And ah, oh, forgotten the name of the film. Uh, you were on a pirate ship with Robert De Niro. Stardust. Stardust. Thank you, mate. That was awesome. Loved that. Stardust. My God, that was a while ago now. Yes, Good no, God. Right. So what have you got yeah. coming up? Well, before we went into lockdown, I was doing Batman. So we were going to be doing, I was going to be playing a nice little part on that, which is a bit of a bummer. I'll probably go back to it, hopefully, because uh, everything's kind of been on, how, on hold with Hollywood. Yeah, and Brothers. In, in the filming Disney. world, they seem to just be going, stop. Yeah, we'll that's it. They can't do anything. So um, I might go back onto Batman. And also, I was magical advisor on the new Doctor Strange. Which was quite nice. Um, was nice. the actor, 
magic and uh, there's a lot of magic involved in it and all that sort of stuff. So I was going to be teaching some actors some stuff uh, and coming up with some ideas for there's some sort of scenario where they go into a, not like Harry Potter, but a kind of magic -y location that people are drinking and there's a restaurant. I don't know much about it, but so I was going to be doing magical advising on that. Um, uh, and then I was working also, I got a shout to go on to, um, uh, what else did I go on to? I can't even remember now. I've been, oh, I've been doing Sherlock Holmes as well, a new TV series of Sherlock Holmes, but not nice. the one with um, uh, uh, coming back. It's, um, it's going back to its original roots um, period. Really? So I was working on that as well. Uh, yeah. It's just saying that, you did the one with Cumberbatch as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. I played a, um, um, I played a, an assassin. A, um, do a you Russian mind assassin. if I link to your IMDb? No. Nope. Just, no, just right, because I, yeah. I know most people know you as the shirtless sexy magician from the <laughs> and and whenever they ask whenever they see that I know you, it's normally have you seen him with his shirt off? And that just feels wrong. <laughs> so I went to I went actually thing. before we went into before we went into lockdown, I went to this big event. Um uh, and I, I wasn't performing or anything, it was literally we were at a table, a friend of mine had booked this table. And uh, we were sitting at the table, and there was this group of girls on another table, and they were caught up, you know, and looking, and God knows what. And all of a sudden, this woman, she'd obviously had a, a bit of Dutch courage, she had a few drinks, and she just came up to me and she went, Excuse me. And I went, Yeah, she went, Is that you? And she just had a, had a picture of me with my shirt off, and I went, Yeah, you can't, you can't pick another picture, you know, from Star Wars or James Bond. No, it's just that. Just, Is that just you? Look at the list. Went back to a group and went, I told you, I told you, the thing, I told you. So yeah, I had a few, I had a few bras that I had to sign that night. Uh, uh, you hate that part of the job, don't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, yeah. hate it. Um, <laughs> so the whole score about today and what I want to title this about not becoming a diva. How do you believe you've kept Matt Sterling real? Um. I don't know, it's probably down to your parents, really, I think. Um, in the fact that, you know, I, I'll always... I've seen people become divas, and I, it just doesn't... It makes my stomach turn, and I think, oh, I hope I'm not like that, and I hope I'm not, you know, viewed like that. And I just kind of go along with what my mum and dad's, you know, always used to, you know, and still do. You know, I go... Uh, I, I, I remember doing, when we did Britain's Got Talent, you know, I, I, I kept it quiet from him. I didn't tell him I'd done it. And then I phoned him that night because Britain's Got Talent texted me and said, right, you're going to be on tonight. And I went, oh, great. And I, I phoned mum and dad and I said, did you watch Britain's Got Talent? Dad went, well, sometimes we watch it, you know. And I went, I'll just watch it tonight. And he went, what? I said, just watch it tonight. He went, why? Well, I went, you might recognise somebody on there tonight. And they watched it. And then when it came on and, I, and after I, um, I phoned them, and I went, what do you reckon? They went, they went, you did really well there. Nice one. Really, really good. And that was it. There was no, my God, it's amazing. This is my son and I'm going to put out, you know, yeah, blah, blah, big blah. placard. I'm the mum. I do, I do what I do. And I, I, my dad builds walls. You know, it doesn't need any more, but he still does when he's, you know, when he's bored. But yeah. my dad was a builder. Do, do you know what I mean? And I, well, I can remember doing the door. I can remember doing the door when I used to work at Roy Owls all those years ago. You know, you get people come up to the door and they try and get in and they go, do you know who I am? And I go, what? What are you talking about? And my favourite story, this is my favourite story, I did security for Wembley uh, Arena and um, <clears throat> when it was the old arena. And we did the night that Michael Jackson, uh, he cancelled. Do you remember when he cancelled? God, yeah, yeah. So we were at the front of the door. Now, the old arena had the doors at the front that you walked in through. As you walked in, that was the back of the arena. So you had to walk all the way through the seats to the stage. And they were, all the doors were, were numbered or, or left. We were at the, uh, going the corner and there was an apple seed or all this sort of thing. We were, yeah, I think it was E, F, D the walkthrough. Yeah. So we were at the door and I was with my mate Jeff, who was huge. He was massive. I mean, he had a head like a microwave. He was ginormous, this guy. 
And I remember standing there and a, and a big Humvee pulled up uh, and um, Linford Christie got out the Humvee and he was with his girlfriend and he walked towards me and he walked towards Jeff and he got the tickets and he slapped them in Jeff's chest and Jeff was massive, just went like that. And Jeff looked at the tickets and he went, right, he said, um, right, this is an A ticket. What you need to do is go around the corner and go all the way down the end to the A door because you're right a bit near the stage. And Linford Christie went, you what? And he went, this is an A ticket. You need to go around the corner because this is E, F and G. You need to go right around the corner. And then for Chrissy, he took the tickets back and he went, do you know who I am? And Jeff went, no. He went, I am Linford Christie. And Jeff went, well, it won't take you long then, will it? And I thought, <laughs> that is perfect. That is spot on. And I stood in the doorway. I had tears down my face. I was crying. <laughs> Linford Christie just was a very sort of, you know, <laughs> put back and just walked around the corner and walked off. I was crying my eyes out. I went, that's what I never want to be. Ne yep. Never want to be that person. And I think that's down to how you're brought up and God knows what. Because I do, you know, jobs and my mum and dad find me up. They go, were you on, you know, blah, blah, blah tonight? And I go, uh, yeah, I was. It's a job. It's a job at the end of the day. And anybody yep. that puts themselves on that pedestal, and I know hundreds that do, and it's all about now, you know, social media, Instagram, look how great I am. I'm constantly putting stuff up and look how, look at me on a motorbike or look at me jumping a car and look at me with so and so, so and so. Yeah, everybody has to do it, but there's people that are better at it than I am because I just kind of go, mm, well, there you go. And I didn't have Instagram before I did BGT and BGT said to me, you need to have Instagram. And I went, I don't even know what it is. What is Instagram? They went, oh, it's pictures. And I went, but who's going to be interested in pictures of me? And they went, they are. They are going to be interested. Yeah. So I went, all right, okay, fair enough. So. It's a, it's a self-promotional world. And that's why depression has come on. Because people will put stuff up and people aren't interested. And they go, well, why aren't you yeah. interested in me? Why aren't you interested? I'm interested. Why aren't you interested in me? I want everybody to... I want to be famous. And that's kind of the problem. Do you know what? That's we've... Um, yeah, we, we've had a friendship where we can talk to each other at the best times and at the worst times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember you hiding me from a scary ex-girlfriend once. Yes. Um, yes. And, and do you know what I mean? And so we both know that Facebook and social media, people will only show off the highlights. Of course they will. They'll never say, they'll never say I'm, I'm down or I'm out or I'm, you know, I'm, re I'm really in a real fucking crap way. And I had a crap time years and years and years ago and I put it on Facebook and, and I went, I oh, know I'm not in a very good place at the moment. And people came back and went, oh, you're right. And I went, yeah, but again, that was, Again, just like any person, go is me going. Do you know what? I need. I need a bit of. I need a, something to come back here. I need something to. Say. But people are craving that all the time, twenty four yeah. seven. They're craving it and they're craving it, and they've got they've got no ability, no skill, but they, you know, they expect. They, they want, they yeah, expect. and it's instant. It's instant. Bang, bang, bang. And I yeah. did a gig. I did a gig last year. Um, we did a stage. I did a stage show. I just had to do twenty minutes, and there was a comedian. And it was like 150 pounds a ticket. And he said to me, we were at the bar. And he went, he went, look down there. And there was a group of girls sitting at the bar, uh, sitting at their table, sorry, having a meal. And as soon as their, their meals came out, they all stood on their chairs and took pictures of their meals. And then just sat, they didn't talk to each other. But as soon as their phone went ping, they were just looking at their phone. And ping, they're looking at their phone. Yeah. Why? Yeah. No, I Why? Prefer, I don't remember yeah, obviously. Pizza you know, with mate. I don't take a picture of me and send it to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Or, you know, you could meet up with a bunch of idiots and play poker and have some cheap pizzas. Exactly. That's what it's all I about. Which one I'd prefer. <laughs> See? They're not that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. I saw the receipt, dude. I saw the... <laughs> mate. Seriously, right, we're going to shoot. We're going to wrap it there. Thank you so much, buddy. No I, problem. No problem, mate. I know that we could do like a five-hour special with you and the stories <laughs> that you've got and the things that you've been up to. Mate, from, from an old buddy, you're doing really well, mate. I'm really proud. Thank you very much. Keep it much going. Appreciate it. And the next time I see you, I'm going to give you such a big <laughs> squeeze. It's going to be unbelievable. Okay? No worries. But thank you very much. I'll link to you right, and stuff. See you soon. No worries. Cheers, mate. Take care. Cheers, boys. Bye-bye, mate. Newton's Nuggets. Oh, my word. Ladies and <laughs> gents, 
that was Matthew Sterling. Um, what a guy! I'll be honest with you, that was a that was a tamed down version of Matthew Sterling. There, there was no alcohol involved. There was no poker game involved. It was it was it, it was lovely, and that is honestly what he's like. Um, Jesse, what, did you, what do you think, dude? Just, I mean, he's somewhere between magical and like. I mean, not in the magic sense, but just literally, like, I hate to use a Britain's Got Talent type word, but he's got real star quality, but yeah. down to earth at the same time. He's just so interesting. Do you know what? It's annoying, isn't it? He's just... He, yeah. <laughs> I really, really want to hate him, but he's lovely. He's <laughs> lovely. Um, you just want to talk and, to him and, all you know, day. Yeah, and we could have, couldn't we? We could have done that interview for yeah. hours and it would not have felt boring. Um, Matt is, yeah. is lovely. Uh, so, Matt, if you're watching this, thank you so much for coming on and doing this, mate. I know you didn't have to. I know you didn't need it in any way, but I really do appreciate it. I I know our followers will love you as much as we do. And um, when we're out of this weird situation that we're all currently in, I owe you a beer. Okay. Uh, before we go, should we have a quick word from the sponsor? Yeah, we certainly should. Perfect. Forest Edge Legal Solicitors. They are brilliant. Thank you to our sponsors. They are awesome. We do really appreciate it. Um, Jesse, what, what, what else can we say? Um, Matt has his own YouTube channel. We'll, we'll find a link to that. Um, we'll put a link up to his website as well. Have a look at the guy. He's lovely, and and please, if you see him doing any one man shows, support him as much as you can. Anything from Jesse? Make sure you hit subscribe button, um, and thanks very much again for joining us. We're on all of the social medias. Um, if you look for hashtag Newton's Nuggets or Paul Newton Magic, you will find us anywhere. Awesome, thank you, mate. And the the whole subscribe thing it is so important to us. Uh, we recently broke 200 subscribers, so thank you everyone that's already subscribed. Um, and we want to keep building. The more we build, the more information we can get out there, the more interesting the shows can be. And if you give us enough likes, we'll get Matt back again. Okay? Tell us if you liked it. Tell us what you enjoyed. Tell us what you hated. Fingers crossed, me and Jesse can fanboy over Matt Sterling again sometime. Um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> awesome. Newton's Nuggets. Well, there we go. That's the end of another show. Thank you very much for, for listening to some dodgy magician drivel on for a little while and chatting with his mates. Uh, this is goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Jesse. Bye bye. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Check out my, my websites. We've got paul-newton.co.uk and we've got mentaltheft.co.uk. Go and check out what we're up to on there. Also, uh, we're starting up a podcast. So please, 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 if you like podcasts and if you like listening to men dribbling on for a while, go sign up to the podcast. If you need us at all, contact us. Comment below. We'll try and get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks a lot for your time and I'll see you again another week. Newton's